Hi guys, my name is Chloe and I recently just renovated my bathroom and documented the process on TikTok. So I had a bunch of people asking me for products and for links to products that I used. So I figured the best way to get you those links was to just link them down below because I can't link stuff on Instagram because I don't have enough followers to do the swipe up thing. So we're here. Also, if you are anything like me, you do a bunch of research before doing a permanent project on your home. So that is exactly what I did. And I'm just gonna be giving you tips and tricks that I wish that I knew before starting this entire renovation. Let's get into it. <laughs> so first product we're gonna talk about is primer. This is so important if you're painting tile. The whole purpose of a primer is to lay it down and make sure that all of the work you just did doesn't come peeling off if it gets a little water on it or if it's, you know, roughened up a bit. So, I would suggest Gripper. It is awesome. It's a little pricey, but like I just explained, you gotta invest in something good if you're gonna put that much work and that much time into stenciling tile. Um, or you can just buy real tile, but either way, painting tile is the best route to go, I think. I think it's great. If you have the money, do real tile. If you don't, don't, but... This is the primer I used. It's awesome. Okay, next is paint. I used paint all over this bathroom. I repainted the walls. I did these cabinets. I also did the floors. Paint is just everywhere. On the floors, I did porch and patio paint by Bear. It's awesome. I didn't seal it. It's held up great. If it doesn't for you, don't come after me, but it's doing great for me. <laughs> As for the walls, I also did bare just normal wall paint. I did it in um, this like off white color so it so it contrasts with the baseboards that are stark white. It looks great. As for the cabinets, I also did bare paint. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of bare paint. I don't know the exact color because I got this paint off of like the oops rack and it was only $9 and somebody just didn't like the paint so bare not bare, Home Depot is just selling it for cheap. So that would be one of my first tips. Always check like the mess ups rack at Home Depot because you never know what you'll find. Next product is going to be the stencils I use for the floor. I don't skimp, don't skimp on a cheap stencil. Buy a nice quality stencil. Um, stencil Revolution, don't know how I found them. I was just on Amazon and I looked them up and they had great reviews and I'm going to show you what mine look like Okay, so this is what my stencils look like. I got two of them so I could work double time I could lay one down paint lay one down paint take off, you know I don't know, but you don't have to buy two. You can also order them depending on the size of your tile My tile is 12 by 12 and I got that stencil size. It works awesome and I would suggest it to anybody. So Stencil Revolution, I'll put the link down below. Totally check them out. Not sponsored, <laughs> I wish. As for a tip for stenciling, do not skimp on brushes. These are the brushes I used. I got a pack of three, I'll link them down below, they're great. They're just these little like flathead stenciling brushes and they are great. They're absolutely wonderful when you're having to do a weird tile and it's like pushed up against the wall like this and you gotta like stencil these back pieces, these little guys get in there and they do the job. So invest in some good stenciling brushes because a big old honker cutting brush is not gonna do the job like this guy. Also, if you're stenciling tile, do not, I repeat, do not put a lot of paint on your roller if you decide to roll. This is what I'm talking about. This guy, look like, look at how fluffy he is. He's really fluffy. He's gonna hold a bunch of paint. This little guy is not gonna hold nearly as much. So I used this little guy. I did three to four rolls and I did not have a lot of paint on this because if you have a bunch of paint, it tends to bleed and your stencil does not look as sharp. So use a little guy and use a little bit of paint. <laughs> Last tip for the stencils is buy some spray mount. I was super skeptical about this because I didn't want it to leave like a tacky residue, 
because I've never used spray mount, but spray mount doesn't do that. So you just take your, I'm not gonna do it, but you just take your stencil and you just spray like this, give it a good lathering. <laughs> and then it's nice and tacky. So when you lay your stencil down flat, it's not gonna buckle, it's not gonna pucker, it's not gonna do anything, and it's gonna stay right in place for you while you're rolling and putting pressure on it, which makes your stencil, I kid you not, it makes it look five times better. I was so adamant about like not using this at first and being like, no, I don't wanna use this. Like, I just wanna put tape on the sides and do it. Um, no, I was just being stubborn. Definitely use the spray mount and definitely secure it because it works way better than tape. Hi, I'm in bed and I'm editing and I forgot to um, tell you a giant tip. It would be to blow dry the back of the stencil um, before you lay it back down to do your next one because you're gonna have paint residue on the back. And if you lay it down in the wrong position and like have to move it around, you're going to get your perfectly white tile or perfectly painted tile underneath, you know, messed up a little bit. So take a blow dryer blow dry the back, and then re-stick it back down just to be sure that you're not going to mess up your surface underneath. Yeah, okay, that's it, bye. <laughs> this is the contact paper I used. It is absolutely wonderful. It's this, like, fake Carrera marble-looking thing. It's beautiful, as you can see. Um, but I'm going to put the link down below. A few tips that I have for the contact paper are have a nice, sharp X-Acto knife because going around the sink and going around other little corners is super difficult if you just have scissors and you're just cutting with scissors. This, you can just lay it down and you can just shoop, shoop, shoop and get the best lines ever and make it look like it's real marble. So that would be my tip for this. Also, make sure you have a credit card handy because it's super easy to just, you know, get that angle and make it lay down flat and get out air bubbles. Darn air bubbles. I don't have any tips for air bubbles. They just, they're gonna happen and you just gotta move on. And if they don't happen for you, tell me your secrets. Okay. Next product is sandpaper. I just chose a random brand to be completely honest. You can use any brand, but I used a hundred grit sandpaper. I, when doing my research, I saw a lot of like, oh, use 80 grit or use I don't know, something low, but I got 100 grit just because my tile was a little glossy and I wanted to make it more porous so that it sucked up the paint better and that the paint adhered to the surface better, but I used a palm sander, I used 100 grit. That would be a big tip. Do this, then prime. And in between, clean well, because when you paint, you're gonna see all those little bumps and all those little like um, dust particles that you didn't sweep up. They're gonna be stuck in your paint. And you know what's gonna happen? Somebody's going to walk in and it's going to hit the bump and then your paint's going to be ruined. So, wow, that really got, that got intense fast. Okay, well, I think that's it. <laughs> I really don't have that much that I use in this bathroom. If you guys want a tutorial on how I did the mirror, let me know, but I really didn't do much. I just painted a lot and then painted some more and then added this contact paper so let me know if you have any questions down below but have a great day and subscribe if you feel like it bye